Whoop, whoop. Two birds getting stoned at once right there. <laughs> Welcome to the Elk Season Podcast. To, uh, we are the Chambers Brothers. My name is Harold. I'm David. And today on the Elk Season Podcast. We've got uh, not a whole lot actually going on in terms of the news. There's a few articles that are out there. Wolves are back in the news yeah, uh, here always, in Idaho. Always. Um, talking about uh, how many days left till elk season. 215. 215. And that's. Sorry. And the Were math you saving on that the, one? <laughs> well, now we I wanted to surprise you. Them. Now we have to start over. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, the thing is, and, and just so whoever catches this, uh, the, the calculation on 215 days is to the 29th of August because our starting day is the 30th yeah. of August. So uh, from this date, which is January 27th? 26th. 26th, yeah. Yeah. So and my my, wife birth, yeah. my wife's birthday is August 29th. Okay. So congratulations. So, <laughs> I know. That's I know. Like, like timely, rather, actually. Yeah. Well, what can you do? <laughs> Yeah. So, anyway, so that's uh, that's what we got coming up. Uh, we're we're gonna be talking about uh, a lot of the Elk One Hundred and One content that hit YouTube in the past couple of weeks because we haven't been out for yep. uh, a couple of weeks. Um, last week I missed because I was having dinner. Yeah. Which, by the way, is was my it good? my only cheat meal since January second. Yeah. How how well how well is the uh, the process going. So, uh, well, you know, uh, so I started at 280. I weighed myself in at 280 on the 2nd of January. The first week, I lost nine pounds okay. to 271. The second week, I lost five pounds okay. to 266. The third, my third weigh in was this week, and I was at 263. So I only lost three pounds. Wow, you caught up with me. Okay, I'm trying. That's where I'm at. I'm trying. Is it? Okay. Yeah, that's where I was this morning. So I'm, I'm hoping if, if my scorched earth diet, and it's still the same. Okay. 100% the same. A bowl of berries and four eggs for breakfast. I got uh, coffee with nothing in it. Just black coffee yeah, and, my, and lots of it. And my strategy is simply only... Cal- or I'll weigh myself, but I'm, I'm keeping myself conscious of my weight, but I'm only allowed to write down my weight to track it if I have beat the previous weight that oh, was lower. Okay. Right? And so... What I've noticed is a really interesting fluctuation of weights between days. So sometimes I'll hit a trend where I'll, I'll, I'll lose a pound a day for like three days and yeah. then I'll jump up. But then uh, over the course of five days, it goes down lower. And so it's kind of this little wave ride down. Are you weighing yourself every day again? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not okay. I'm not writing it down every day. Oh, Because gotcha. I can only write it down if I'm at the, the last. So as I lose weight, whatever that marker is, I can only write down the weight if it's below that number. Yeah. And so what that psychologically is working with me on is like, hey, I want to make sure that I get below 263. So as I go through the day, I'm, I'm thinking more about what am I eating and what am I not eating? What am I drinking? And when am I eating and drinking all that stuff? And yeah. so I... And you're doing dry January too. Which is is a good... <laughs> it's beneficial to that. That's a few calories. Um, That's a few calories a day or a week, whatever it is, however it is you want to calculate it. Yeah, and and my strategy, as I mentioned before the podcast, is to make sure that I have a, a little more intentional relationship with alcohol yeah. after that after this month too, yeah. just so that it's it's more... It has, to, it has to be intentional. I really enjoy drinking. Mm-hmm. I do. And, and to the point where... Oh, I could have one with lunch. Sure, I could have one with dinner. Oh, I need a cocktail. Oh, you know, yeah. and it, and it just it just a little too much, especially yeah. during the holidays. Yeah. And I, but I like to enjoy the holidays. But but this has been my my as I also mentioned earlier, this has been my best, uh, my favorite um, dry January for whatever reason. Yeah. I just I'm noticing just how better I feel, and maybe I was just hitting it too hard on the holidays. I don't I, know. Yeah, but. I like the idea of a human hibernation. Yeah, just you know what I know I've been picking out. Right, just like all the animals do when when things are in in high supply and in, mm-hmm. in great supply, yeah, they just pick out. And you know what? Things are in short supply now. Effectively, um, in in January, we all want to, you know, just get into this hibernation mode. Yeah. Everybody's trying to lose weight. There's dry January, and uh, and so I'm just like leaning into that. Like it's just it's just a hibernation. If I can just scorched earth for three months, and I have I got. I got a I got a big competition coming up in about three weeks that I really hope because I when I came out from, when I came home from elk season yeah I was in the two hundred and fifty pounds wow I know because I was starved to death and overworked I mean yeah that's I, right. I 
it, that was such a long day. It took me so I, many days I, to recover. And I said this before. I was kind of impressed that you were still willing to go out with me oh. on, on that last weekend. And speaking of those weekends, yeah. so I'm you know, Labor Day weekend is always a good. I'm good for a hike. And yeah. look, if the right opportunity presents itself, which is really any opportunity, any. I'll take it. If it's brown, it's down. But I'm 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 making sure that I'm available. So so the the, the month ends yeah. on a Saturday, the thirtieth, and I don't want to go out for only a Saturday. Yeah, I Gosh. don't have time. So it's got to be that previous weekend. So my my hopes, if yeah. Labor Day weekend doesn't you know bring anything, then that second to last weekend is when I'll. Okay, can we? Are we going to be able to buffer that with extra days? That I don't know because you're not. Yeah, if you use you use kind of an extra day on Labor Day this this last year, yeah, 2022. I did. I, and you're like, hey, let's 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 move that. Right. So thinking that far ahead, I'm hoping to to have some of those days. Okay. The problem is I get so many free days at my job yeah. and my contract. Uh, I'm using two of them. Right. Here in the spring. Oh. I've got an anniversary date. But that, I, but I thought you get I thought you get new ones. A new contract begins in the fall. I knew that. That's right, because you, you've done that before. Yeah, that's right. Because you're like, no, wait a minute. I get two new days. I forget. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, forget. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah, yeah, you bet. You bet. Holy crap. <laughs> Duh. Okay. So right. so my hope would then to maybe try to schedule a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Okay. That's what I would. So I'm I'm also trying to schedule things around my little band gig thing. Yeah. So I on the calendar for them to say, hey, dates that David is not available. We we had it starts with a nine, right? I'm busy, and I we already so after our last gig, the the guy who ran our sound at the at the venue we were at, he actually works at the college with me, but he he works as the sound guy for the fine arts. Oh, okay. And I, I recognize him. I'm like, hey, man, I, I'm a faculty member there. And so we had, you know, it was a cool conversation. Um, but after we were done, he's like, so my wife does this thing in the fall and she heard you do your sound check and she said, get their contact inform- information. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's a that's a very flattering yes, compliment. Yes, yes, very so, nice, very nice. Um, and he goes, yeah, in September. And I immediately go, oh my gosh, I can't do September. That's my, blah, 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 blah. he probably was like, Oh yeah. man, I shouldn't open my mouth. Yeah. I don't want to work with these guys anymore. This guy just can tell me how he's always got to go elk hunting. Yeah. And so there's possibility I could have a gig in in September, but I'm not going to book a gig if I'm booked hunting. So it just right. FYI. Okay. Can I can I this is a perfect opportunity for a great elk season story. Yes. Because I have a child, now two children, diagnosed with autism. Yes. So recent recently the six year old, and he's really high functioning. And we and anyways. So I and I also have a twenty-one-year-old. Um, crazy she, that she's she, twi- she's twenty-one. Yeah, she's twenty-one. It still boggles my and, mind. And she she lives at home. So I've spent you know past eighteen years plus, you know, with yeah. raising raising this autistic, and and we do tons of benefit stuff. And Autism Awareness Awareness Month is in April. Yeah. And so so CrossFit, CrossFit did this big thing where like, hey, we're gonna do it's called Lift Up Luke. And it was for this uh this 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 kid that uh, we knew his parents. We did some training with his parents. Okay. And they this the the guys who did the training um were uh, were really high up in CrossFit. And so they had this event called Give Five. It's a five minute workout, give five for autism, and you come and do a workout and you donate some money to Autism Speaks or whatever. And it's and it's a great event, and we do it in April. But the 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 open the CrossFit open is in March, okay. And then there's regionals, and so all these gyms are working on getting athletes to the regional events. And like, listen, we can't do autism awareness in April. Can we move it to September? Right. Oh and they, yeah. They asked everybody but me, and my wife says your daughter has a benefit workout. On a Saturday in September, I said, I'm sorry, I'm going to miss it. Yeah. I will tell you this months in advance. I've raised that child. I will go to everything autism. Yeah. But you, you, you change it to September. And people will be like, gosh, where's Harold? I thought, you know, I thought he was like this autism dad. And like, it's elk season. Yeah. <laughs> autism awareness so is in April. You have a very 
clever and crafty way of shaming me for saying that I would open a weekend to go do a gig somewhere. No, listen. So thank you very much for just we talked we talked last week that my son may be getting married in September. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right? What did I say? I don't have to celebrate those anniversaries. I'll go to the wedding. <laughs> yeah. I won't I won't miss it. I won't miss my son's wedding for elk season. But I'll <laughs> I'll think twice about going. You're right, right. <laughs> like <laughs> Jared. Oh, good. Jared, no, no, no. This happened before elk season. This happened before elk season. Jared's brother, Nick. I can't I can't believe I'm laughing about this. His wife passed away. Uh-huh. And and she was and and you know, it was like inevitable. There was something wrong with her and something's gonna happen, but he was devastated. Yeah. His brother, and I know I told you about this. Yeah, yeah, His yeah. brother was devastated. And and I and I go, so Jared, are you you you, you still gonna make it to elk camp? <laughs> right Can't he goes you. well yeah <laughs> of course i'm gonna make it to elk camp and so that's the question i had to ask myself would i still go elk hunting if my only brother's wife passed away <laughs> there's the world is and full so of I, of uh choices you know I, so. I, it, laughing at the idea of it that's all <laughs> that's, of course of course i would be there but uh, just laughing at the idea that, well, you know, I didn't, I wasn't that close to her. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's just <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so elk season, yeah, there are some lines. Yeah. But I will second guess that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, I, I, my brain went yeah. blank. Um, the, the media. So we watched a bunch of stuff, uh, watched a bunch of stuff on YouTube. Uh, yeah. The Elk 101 guys, Destination Elk version five or V5. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's, yeah. it's version or Victory Five. They're, they're, they're doing some interesting stuff. Yeah. I, I, so a couple of things. Uh, I guess I would say this is, uh, these are my observations. Okay. I like the way they're editing the videos for the elk hunting yeah. this year as opposed to last year. Because last year they were jumping around way too much yeah. between camps. Yeah. And they're still jumping from camps, but. It's more targeted in how they're allowing you to follow some of the storylines. Agreed. Agreed. And I like that because they'll date it. They'll say, these guys are here and this is the date. Yeah. These guys are here and it's a different date. It's three weeks later in the same episode. But they're sort of going through the days of the hunt and paralleling right. and, the storyline. And the hosts of this this uh, YouTube channel then go on to have a banter of sorts afterwards, which yeah. it's useful useful information you know, to, to each their own. I, I don't know... I don't want to be too. It's not that I want to sound harsh. I'm just, you know, it's a bit slow paced. Yeah, a little more slow yeah. paced than I than I was anticipating. Not that yeah. it's bad. It's just that it's what it is. But there's some great information there. They're doing some amazing it giveaways. Is. Yeah, so you can get on there and comment after each video. Yeah. Which uh, I look, I have dumb luck, and I'm hoping that dumb luck shows up with my comments <laughs> in the videos. In fact, I was sad because in the last. Not not the episode that dropped today, but the episode that dropped on Tuesday. And you yeah. know this. I watched the episode because kids disappeared out of the living room. Wife's doing homework. She's in school. And so I'm yeah. out there alone. I'm like, well, I've got Elk uh, 101. So I put it on and my golden retriever's on the couch next to me. And she's 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 not, you know, she's she's lazy and she's sleeping. But all of a sudden, they they have a shot of Elk. And a come. house dog, a family dog. Yeah. The sweetest thing. The sweetest thing. So nice. Just, the, the, yeah. There's a picture of this the saddle and these Elk start coming over the hill. And all of a sudden, she is on alert. Yeah. And she's just sitting there staring. And I, I've got pictures and video of this situation. She just, she is tuned in. And I'm just thinking, that's my dog. That yeah. right there. And I know she's a killer in her heart. Yeah. I've seen her take after the wildlife here in my backyard. And yeah. she's done a pretty good job with those gophers <laughs> when she could get to them. The gopher in the garden was different because she'll get the gopher in the garden, but she'll also get the garden. And that's, yeah. uh, you know, so that was a rough situation. But it's not good. Uh, yeah, she just, uh, I, I often wonder what would happen to her if I do take her to the woods. Would I have a dog to bring home? I think, I think so. I think so. I think, I think she'd so. probably stay somewhat tempered, but she yeah. would love to go chase after some squirrels and stuff. And that's what I'm worried about. If she's that hot, on on seeing an elk on a TV, but that much about you know, like the gophers, she'll she'll tear into yeah. some stuff. Yeah, it's but. funny. It's funny. The um, even the dogs in my house. I got a doodle. I got a, a sheep a doodle or some idiot doodle, uh-huh. and, and I have a, a, a Chihuahua Shih Tzu cross. Oh, yeah. Right, <laughs> just yeah. Just, I and you know what? They're family dogs. They're great. 
<laughs> but when you make elk sounds, they're both like, yeah. I never heard no elk sound before, but I know that's a wild animal. Yeah. And I'm on the prowl. We we were riding our bikes last summer and we were getting over towards the canyon rim here in Twin Falls and there was a killdeer. Yeah. On had a nest right off the road off the sidewalk. Yeah. And what do killdeer do? They make a lot of noise, right? So I, I decided to film it and it actually wasn't leaving its nest. It was sitting on the nest just squawking at us. So I pulled up my phone and I was just wanted a picture, but somehow I got just one second of this bird and it just happened to be during its noise. And so I have this clip on my phone that's just this choop, 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 <laughs> choop. And I can pull it up and it'll play and play and play and play. And if I play that for the dog, my dog's name is Lyra. If I play that yeah. for Lyra, she she get like if I thought she was on alert for the elk, she gets bothered yeah. by the sound of that bird. Birds. She's and if you think about it, it's in her DNA. She yeah. was bred to to retrieve birds. Yeah. So yeah. if I, if she did if she did what she did to a gopher, I can only imagine what she would do to a duck. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully just bring oh, it back. And and <laughs> and I do have precedent. I do actually have some indication of what would happen. So when she was a puppy, she's probably 8 months old. The pandemic happens. We live in it. We we moved from our our home that we sold into our rental. Yeah. From our rental, we were able to walk to the soccer complex here in Twin Falls. Yeah. And Vessa walked Lyra down and she's like there's nobody there. It's just us. So she takes Lyra off her leash. And Lyra spots a bird. Uh oh. And it took about a half hour to get her back. Wow. She took off and chased and chased and chased wow. and chased and chased. That impulse is pretty <laughs> yeah. strong. Yeah. So puppy Lyra got some experience chasing a, a, a real bird and then wow. So wow. she's she's wired that I think pretty good. Even with her limited experience, she's pretty wired. We have uh we have some pretty good some pretty good news on the waterfront. Yeah. There has been, what do they call, atmospheric rivers that have been hitting California. The pineapple Express o- Over and over and over and over again. And they have added uh, water to basins across the West, including yeah. the Northern Rockies. Um, and as well as, as Utah and Colorado, which is really, really, really important yeah. for the Colorado River. And I, But I saw this graph. And it's and it helps it helps us understand uh, we're a, you know we're 115 percent above normal or we're 15 percent above normal or we're at 150 percent for this time and it's like if we're looking at a we're looking at a graph <clears throat> of of a mountain and we're like well we're supposed to be we're supposed to be one quarter of the way up the mountain or let's go you know let's go three quarters the way it's almost spring. We're, we we need to be three quarters of our way of the way up the mountain, but we're five eighths, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. We're just a little bit, a little bit. No, which one's longer? Three quarters, three quarters is, yeah, five eighths is more. Sorry, so <laughs> yeah, right. I sorry, so. yeah, I got lost in in fractions there. <laughs> Anyways, so we're 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 five eighths and and. We're at five eighths when we need to be only at three quarters, but we still have to get to one, right? We still have to be able to get to that point. So, sorry. Yeah, I I realized I, when I used <laughs> you mentioned headlines, and so I I reached for the iPad, and it I yeah, just, it, it hasn't been charging. Oh, okay. so I was trying to troubleshoot how to do that while you were talking. So I apologize if it looked like I was a little distracted. Yeah. I, yeah, just I just I just want to get caught up on the water situation, which is really good. We have we have some extended cold coming across the west. Yeah. Actually, the whole country next week, the whole country. We have uh, Groundhog's Day coming up. Yep. I know everybody. I know that's a really important weather event. It's <laughs> probably the most to... important and accurate <laughs> prediction of what's coming. Everybody so needs to pay attention. Well, well, it, what it means is it's, you know, it's it's oh, it's 4 weeks till spring or 6 weeks till spring. Who cares? It's 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 the point. Spring's coming. Yeah. That's the that's the that's the marker. Hey, it's February. Spring's going to be here. I promise. That's what that's what Groundhog's Day is. By the way, since you're talking about runoff, there was a major weather event in our hunting area that left some yeah, some yeah. scars in the hillside. Huge. So there's the place in the Ripper that we like to yeah. cross next to that. We have some pictures, and I found a picture taken from that spot. Yeah? For, for when we would sit there Yeah. The scope. I have some pictures. I need to go dig them up. So okay. You, I, I just, uh, we're, uh, always Compare careful about the backdrop, but, but it'd be kind of cool to show that side yeah. by side. Like, it's it's remarkable. 
Like, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Um, okay, I am charging now. That's good. All right. All right. So, the, so basically, the water situation. We're not done yet. We're not there yet. It's been good and cold, which means the rock or, or the, the water stays in the rock. It's amazing that place in the Ripper where we hike up. Uh, it's right off of Elk Ridge between Elk Ridge and yeah. the Ripper, and you hike over there. And still, even though we know it hasn't rained in days or yeah. even weeks, there's still pure delicious water trickling out of the rocks out of that, of that spring and oh we my know gosh. where the top of the mountain is it's yeah. not that far no we've been there the rock holds so much dirt and we so much see water you mean so much water the rock holds so much water <laughs> i hope that's and not what i've been well, drinking <laughs> well i was i was thinking about the times where it snowed a foot yeah and it's gone by the end of the day yeah but there's no runoff yeah, it's it's it, absorbed. It's just it's a lot, and and the ground is dry already. Yeah, it's like sucked into the rocks. So that's impressive. Uh, yeah, it's really cool, and to, to know that we've got some really good cold weather to kind of hold it back yeah. into the mountains. Having a slow runoff uh, from the winter uh, snowpack is important. Yeah, and last year we had a lot of snow real quick, but it melted quick. Uh, we had warm, yeah, uh, fronts coming through, and so February. we had a we had a late spring last year. Yeah. Spring came late, from my memory, from my recollection. Yeah, it seems like it seems to track. Because we 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 planned to go out <laughs> shed hunting. <laughs> we just like every weekend. I was like, now it's raining again. Now it's oh. raining again. Now it's raining again. Yeah. And we were encouraged by that it's because like we knew mid to that... late March when they shed right. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, they're starting to shed now. I'm starting to see pictures. I'm starting to see pictures huh. of 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 bloody antlers. Being okay. found, and they might be in the in the in the deep south, and whitetail might lose them before elk and and, and muleys or whatever. <clears throat> I don't really know, but um, some of the guys uh, shed hunting have found some. Maybe, maybe it was an old picture. I'm, so because it, it seemed well, early to I, me, I would imagine there's it, it. The majority of sheds fall during a certain time, but yeah, there's it, as there's outliers. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I it's have no a, idea. I, it's a window. It's a. Window. I honestly don't know. I just yeah. know that. It's like mid March or something like that. I keep reading things. Yeah, we and don't want to. We don't want to go out and pursue them until mid March because right. there's not enough food for them to be hassled from location to location. Yeah, but um, but Daria, they're out there. I what I need to do, and honestly, I if you know, I'll probably do this this weekend. Is take my phone scope out and yeah. just find some elk somewhere. Where are they hanging out right now? January, that's, February. That's a good idea, right? Take take some video. Have some cool video. Go okay. Well. I'll hike up there and look for antlers. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> so we will see. We were talking, and I don't want to get too distracted because we were talking about some content on YouTube. Yeah. And there's been three different episodes. Yes. Um, and so I want to take, I want to talk. There's something different about all three episodes. And I'm sorry I didn't take notes. I should. I watched this and I go, oh, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember. That. I made a few mental notes on, on yeah. things because a lot of this is in Idaho. Yeah, a lot. And so I'm I'm watching this. I'm like, some of this looks familiar, but it only looks familiar because so it's Idaho. Yeah. Uh, but there, what are they doing, and how are they doing it, and what does that compare to what we do, you yeah. and me? And so there's a couple things that we have con- we've we've started tracking in our vocabulary. We've mentioned it, but it's just not something we've gotten good at, and that's call. Yeah. I, I'm really impressed with the number of calls. Like. But I don't know what it is that w- that's going to help us break through that because we we started to like w- that last day, yeah. we got to a certain point. We waited till we heard something. We called. We called it in. Yeah. But but to to just call more and they're dude, dry calling so much more than I would have thought to ever do. So so yeah, but it, it depends. Now angry Spike has a different strategy. They drive around that well, little Suzuki. A- angry Spike is on the in Oregon yeah, now. So that's yeah. a, I, I would consider that different demographic, different situation. And they call a lot. I, they do. But, but but they have to because it's thick and they can they can jump from spot to spot right. to spot. And it was and that was interesting. You're you're right though. The other guys are doing and I'm and I'm trying to pay attention and they're calling them from a long distance. Yeah. I did notice that. Yeah. Long distance, like that guy's got to be three, four hundred yards and away, I, and raking, yeah, four hundred yards, and early in the season, very early. And I'm just thinking, yeah, huh? I I don't know. It just seems counterintuitive. But oh. then again, what kind of success have I had, and what kind of success <laughs> do they have? And so at they a certain point, doing. yeah, a certain point, you got to go. Okay, well, we know elk don't have to rut to bugle, right? Yeah, they'll they'll, they'll bugle anytime, and 
you know, we know the, the area we went into, you know, they were all still, um, they were all still bachelored up, um, uh, in, on that Labor Day yeah. weekend. Yeah. Um, I, we didn't, I, we didn't hear a peep. Nope. We didn't hear a peep all weekend long. We saw, no. I think 11 different bull elk. Yeah. That, that <clears throat> in massive the same one. draw in the same draw. Yeah. 11 different bull elk different from the elk I shot in the yeah. same draw. Yeah. <clears throat> but, and I will say this, one thing I did note is that, uh, some of the guys, um, the twin brothers and, uh, Corey and Donnie, yeah. they did talk about how we're back here. This is the area we hunt. We're familiar with this area. This is where we hunt. We're back here again. This yeah. is where we hunt. They're hunting the same area. Guys coming from, I mean, getting to, getting to know a new area. Yeah. It takes years. And, and it so takes th- years. So think of, of the awesome situation that you and I have had because of the two areas that we tend to yeah. go to. Now, even though we hadn't been to the one in a while, we knew it. Because yeah. we had, and you so so yeah. I'm that's a comforting thing to know that that we're doing at least that aspect of it right. We know it enough to yeah. know. I mean, and that was paramount when we got up on that last weekend because there were other hunters and they're they're like, well, we were going to do this, and we're like, we totally know the area. We're going to go no so, problem. Yeah. And and they're like, awesome. They they were really relieved that we had the ability to be able to do that. And how frustrating it would have been to them? Yeah. You know, because I've I've run into that where I ran into hunters that weren't from that area, and I tried telling them my plans, and I'm like, "Well, I got all these different plans," and they're like, "Well, we had all those plans too," and I'm like, "Well, okay, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take part of your plan, but I'm going to go beyond it because right. we all got to hunt." So I mean, there's at a certain point we got to call a spade a spade and be like, "Well, we're just going to have to share the hunting situation." Yeah. yeah. So there's plenty of room, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go in. The, I was basically I went to the backyard. But okay. And they were h- hanging out on. Yeah, I love the backyard. And they yeah, were, no, I love the backyard. And they were hanging out on Elk Ridge. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I ended up not going all the way to the backyard. I got all the way up, and they they were making lots of noise. And, and then I I heard that bull in, in the tree stand in the kitchen. Yeah. And I end, eventually ended up over there, but it was it was all washed up after, by that. Yeah, end guys, of the day. guys marching through the woods, uh, bugling. Is something that I've seen. Yeah, we we've Plenty. experienced that. We've heard yeah. it. It's obvious that it's not an elk. And there have been times when guys bugling, and you know, it's so funny. <laughs> they'll get the elk talking, but they'll just sit there on a wallow and bugle. Yeah. And so there was one time in the backyard where I'm like, Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm I just, remember that. Yeah. That I know that those guys are. I know that those guys are just hunters. Yeah. So I'm gonna go, and they keep getting this other bull to talk. So I don't have to do any work. All I got to do is, is hike in on them. Yeah, and I didn't get I didn't get enough elevation to get the wind where I needed it. Yeah, and I got busted. So, but anyway. and that is one of the biggest notes from a lot of the excursions we've had, but even these videos this year. Wind. Yeah. Figure out the wind. Always, always, always. So have that. So important. The wind so checker. Got to use the wind checker more and more and more. Yeah. And and I I even had to learn that lesson the hard way the first weekend out. Yeah. Yeah. Man, just wasn't thinking about how the thermals work, you know, how the topography works. Yeah. And, and the, the number of times I've heard thermal references in the first oh, three episodes yeah. makes me go. <sighs> yeah. They're, they're sending a message there, and I know, and I've heard it, and they've, it's been explained by all these videos. But it, I, I need to take that information now and go out and, and really try to understand it in real time because I tend to forget that. So I've got to make a, a note that this year when I'm out understanding the knowledge, so refresh my memory of the knowledge of how thermals work yeah, and then try to watch for that right. and understand it right. in fill, the field. Fill in the gaps in the field because, well, this mountain is shaped this way, but it's also part of this mountain, yeah. which is shaped this way, and the sun hits it different on this day. Yeah, And so there's a, there's a lot of... It's very intricate. And still... I still think the trees are like Plinko, right? They take your scent. <laughs> sure. They take your scent and it swir- it hits this tree and it swirls uphill. It's this tree and it swirls downhill. Yeah. So you've got a you've got a a, 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 a an area of scent that you're just going to be detected in. Now that time you caught two bulls in the kitchen. Yeah. Just good strong wind. Yeah. Right. I, the wind was, yeah. was that was my first experience yeah. there. My first oh, day ever hunting. Oh man! Ever, 
No, that was my second day. Was it? Hold on. I thought it was your first. Yeah, that was my first day yeah. hunting out there, and I was just exploring. Yeah. And I was going up and down these washes, and I, I, I still, I, I've told the story a hundred times, but it's, I like to tell it. I got up to the top, I was, so I was one wash over from this place where they were at that I had last seen them head toward, and I get up, and it's a stiff cross breeze going from my left to right up the mountain, Yeah. and I sneeze because I got blue eyes and I didn't have sunglasses, Yeah, yeah. and I thought, well, hell. and I just dis- discounted that, that they could still be there. I didn't think about all the elements you know, blocking the sound of my voice being washed away with the wind. I never really thought about it. Yeah. And... Uh, the sound of my sneeze that is and so i go down the gully and i come up to the next ridge which is right above where they're at and they were there they had no clue they were oblivious it was and i'm ridge lined but i had it i moved slow and i just slowly sat down yeah and they're 40 yards from the top of wow. this ravine wow of four the four point in the spike <laughs> full full velvet still i, I was I, that's so cool you see the reds of their eyes yeah and then, you know, you get in that debate of, oh, do I want the spike or the four-point spike or the four-point? <laughs> is it 30 or is it 40? 30 or 40 or the spike, four-point spike? You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and draw. So I drew. I actually had a full draw at one point. But I was like, I don't know how dis- how far away they are. So I, I let the draw oh. back. So I'm like, okay, spike, yeah. four-point spike. Okay, I'll go to the four-point. The, four, the four-point had its head behind a tree, but the spike was like maybe 35 yards from Yeah. Me. You lost a little bit of sleep over that one maybe a and few the, times. And so I, I go to draw <laughs> and the spike saw me. Oh, because I, I wasn't moving slow enough. And um, he went over to the, sp- the, the four point. And they, they had a conversation and he said, hey, there's something at the top of that freaking hill. And they both look at me. Wow. He, he, yeah. he went over to the spike. Yeah, you the, told me. And it just it was so amazing to see that communication. They both looked over at me and I just yeah. sit still. I look like a bush just sitting at the top of the hill. And and, and but they, they were like, yeah, that they bush don't, is suspicious. Yeah. But yeah. then they, they went about 60 yards. And then they slowly grazed off, and I, there was no way I, di- I didn't have the knowledge or understanding how to get them to call back. Yeah. Or so, but it was still quite a remarkable experience. Like when you, anytime when you, you get close to elk, yeah, anytime, and, and when it's a brand new area, to to have yeah. an encounter, you know. And I I told you about the encounter that I didn't have, but I did have, which got me up there in the first place. I just first and foremost, I was looking for a ravine that had lots of offshoot canyons. Right, that's yeah. where this is. Yeah, and we were hiking. I was hiking with my family on my birthday up to the, the on the lake trail that's up there. And yeah, I we crossed the stream. Oh, yeah, and the kids got tired and we turned around, so we weren't going to make it to the lake and came back to a, a creek crossing that we had just crossed. And there was an elk print that wasn't there when we came through. And I don't know about how much any, time had passed. About fifteen minutes. Wow. We and and the thing is. And, and the the kids that probably won't have the memory. Draven was six. Bram was three. Vessa might remember. Vessa would remember. But I remember every creek crossing I come to, I go, I want to look for for sign. Want to look right, for sign. Right. I'm looking for prints. Always. And I wasn't really seeing anything. And so this last creek crossing, we crossed it, and I'm like, there's no prints. So we we go on up the trail, and then we turn around, we come back. There's a print. Yeah. So it's like it's a good sign. <clears throat> I'm like, there's elk here. This is this is yeah. active. Like it's. And that 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 lake trail, that the the, the um, beautiful meadows that are above that lake trail. And really, you were you and you and I were marveling at the elk we saw before we left. Yes, yes, and yes. That, that's over on that. Oh, really? That area, yeah. Wow. So, oh, that was so picturesque. Yeah, that was so cool. There's a big steep mountainside with yeah. a bunch of aspens and a herd of yeah. elk just slowly grazing. In all grazing. their fall colors. Yeah, the aspens was... in their fall colors and. Bullock with their heads back chasing cows around. So ah. that that was that's what sold me on that area. It's like I knew there was something going on, and I kind of decided the the, the the trailhead that we now know very well. Yeah. And the only other thing about that day that I, I decided that was the the area I was going to start hunting was uh, I passed a morel mushroom, not knowing what it was. It looked like honeycomb, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know, mushrooms can be deadly. That, that that looks like I don't know, but it it was huge. Oh wow! And we passed it up. Oh, it was right off the trail too. All right. Well, there's always next time. I've been looking for a morel up there ever since. Okay. But now, I know. I've been watching, but looking for white pine nuts too. Not, not <laughs> ever not, since. Now that we have, uh, now that we have a burn area, though. When are the white pine nuts going to come out again? I, I. Keep, that was 2017, right? Yeah, I keep yeah. meaning to bring them. We, I, I want to take them up to that burn area yeah. and give the give the giving tree or the mother tree back well, her, they, her babies. They they like seed. They like seed every once in a while. Yeah, and and, and it, they have to meet certain conditions. Yeah. So it we was, saw it that one year thick. What a remarkable thick. experience yeah. that was. 
Yeah. And then to see it all up and gone in its ashes. Like whatever it's 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 poetic in its own way. Yeah. You know, to to see the 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 giving tree, the mother tree. Yeah. Do that and then she's she's a crisp. Yeah. You know? We we sat I got a video of us eating uh eating, cooking and eating underneath yeah. that tree multiple times. Yeah. Multiple I've times. I've got pictures taken underneath it when it was snow. I, there was like three inches of, or four or five inches of snow yeah. up there. I camped. I actually had a tent underneath that tree yeah. at one point. So yeah, that's that's sad to see you go. Now there is a story in our uh, in the in the news uh, in the news bits uh, right. about a uh, burglary at Trailheads. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard about this on the uh, news this morning. Channel, yeah, Channel Seven Boise was talking about. So this. watch out, burglary from the Trailhead. Uh, you got cameras to help watch your car. Number it's number, a, it's a real dirty, dirty thing to do. Number one thing is lock your vehicles when you go to a trailhead, please. But also as important is anything that is of any value should yeah. not be within sight of your windows. They're so outdoors. People have so much valuable stuff. They got coolers. They got flashlights. They got bikes. They got all. They got so much gear worth so much money. You know, if you break it, you don't have to. You don't have to see something at a trailhead to but, know that car, but that Subaru. But <laughs> criminals are opportunistic. Yeah. So, a if the vehicle's unlocked, they're going to get into it. Yeah. If they see something valuable, the car's locked, then they'll break into it. And so, I. But so, putting a deterrent of any kind is going to help more than anything. Oh, it's, it's not going to to be a hundred percent, but it's going to help deter right. and deterrence is an important concept like if you move into an like what the idea is you have a lot of lights in your neighborhood you're going to reduce the amount of crime right not true under certain circumstances sure because sure. if if nobody in the neighborhood is friends and nobody talks to each other they're less likely to care that somebody's going over to your house that they might not know yeah and so the light is opportunistic for the burglar because they can see better and it's easier for them to get in and get out quickly and so it's not that I'm unneighborly. We know who our neighbors are, but we don't really know them. Right. So we turn our lights off at night when and we have no street light. I mean, there's a big street light out here anyway. Yeah, there is. But yeah. but our house lights and, and everywhere else, we try to make it less inviting because of that that reason. Um so things that you might things that might help you make a vehicle less inviting, a lock it. Yeah. Put, you know, if you have, you know, Hopefully your car, many, most cars today have tinted windows, so it's a little bit harder to see in, yeah. but put a sunblock in your front window, those big things that yeah. you unfold and yeah. put those in to yeah. block from easy visual sight into the vehicle from the remember, front. Remember that time I parked the truck at the trailhead and forgot to roll the window up? I didn't want to have to bring, you and, brought it up. I'm just going to say. And we we hiked in and slept for a couple days. Yep. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> that was... Uh, we were lucky. I'm, we were lucky. Now I felt really bad for you. It's like, is that, is that your truck? You leave the the windows down. I'm like, oh yeah, man. I, I guess so. I guess. You know, so. can I be honest? You should always be honest. So, <laughs> so, sorry, I would laugh. I'm laughing. <laughs> I get the guy, guy says, guy says. Hey, who's if this is your truck? The windows are down, and there was a storm that went through. Yeah, big, big storm, storm right? Stupid big. So the first thought I have is, oh crap, Harold, your truck. And then the the second thought, which really very quickly pushed out the first thought, I'm gonna have to ride home on a wet seat. Yeah, yeah, but but it actually was dry. Actually, you drove up there. No, you, I was with you. No, nope, I met you up there. Oh. So you didn't have to. You so didn't have to sit there. I misremembered. Yeah. It was a uh, yeah. thank goodness I drove here, bro, drove up here on my own, so I don't have to go home on a wet seat. Yeah, because I'm as, a jerk like that. As far as I know, that seat was never wet, <laughs> right? <laughs> it was. It, was, it might have got rained on or something. It was. There was like rain and snow inside my tent. Yeah, when I was sleeping, but the truck didn't look and, like it got hit at uh, all. To be honest, was fine. Nothing was stolen out of it. I mean, you know the bow cases, bow cases, all this yeah. gear. Yeah. I was just I, I I hiked up and then I hiked all the way down to meet you and and hiked back up again. Yeah, with more that's food right. and, oh, yeah, and supplies. And, and I remember yeah. now. Yeah, okay, because that's that's right. And you're in your anyway. excitement to tell me that you had run into John. Yeah, well, you, I ran into somebody who knew John. Yeah, well, actually, I did see John that night. So because he was packing out his second elk of the week from the same draw. Yeah, with a traditional bow. Our our spot's a honey hole. Yeah, it we is. have lots of success seeing them. Yeah. 
we're getting closer and closer. It's going to happen up there sooner it will. than later, it will. I think. It was ridiculously close. 60 yards. Yeah. And you showed me that video. I I still... He's pretty. He was pretty. I I can't believe that's what we... I, yeah. I'm, st- I, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> like, the day that we were up there yeah. and all of that... It doesn't hit the same. And when you showed me, I thought... Yeah. Wow. That's somebody else's wow. dream. That's not my dream. That's somebody else's dream. No, we lived it, man. Yeah. The, we lived it. I'll be I'll be we appreciative for that. And being able and, and and on that same hillside, being able to see an elk the morning we left from camp, yeah, from the car. Yeah. That was ridiculous. Yeah. Ripper pass. That's that's God. Uh, get to know your elk area. <laughs> that's that's what I love about that spot, man. Yeah. And and I know a lot of so another another picture that I found recently is of the trailhead and all the vehicles that one year I can't remember if it was twenty seventeen or nineteen yeah. eighteen and so I've got a picture and there's no license plate so it'd be a safe one I should send it over to you and yeah. you can prop out any background I don't think I, I actually think I have it to where you it wouldn't you, reveal yeah, the you trailhead tell. necessarily unless you recognize your vehicle in it but yeah but there's like I think eleven or twelve vehicles at this trailhead and how many people did we see that weekend I. I don't remember seeing a single person. I don't person. know that we saw any. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when you know your area and you're in there, you know, even if there's a lot of... That's what another thing about that place that has has boggled my mind, but also I'm appreciative of. I've seen vehicles like that at the trailhead. But I have I'm I have run into hunters every now and then, but not in the droves that it, you, your brain thinks because of the number of vehicles you see. And right. It's, it's, there's a right. lot of space. You see four or five cars and you're like, oh, no. Or you see 10 and you're like, oh, this is going to suck. And then you don't see anybody. Yeah. Anybody in the woods. And that's helped me because I would get anxious about the thought of seeing anybody driving on the road in Ketchum. Yeah. And I'm not even off the pavement yet. I'm like, (laughs) it's like, it's like Homer (laughs) hitting that car backing out because he's going to go get that trampoline and he he crashes them. (laughs) Sorry. If you, that's an obscure Simpsons quote, but. I maybe that's because that maybe that episode is why I have the feeling I have when I go hunting because like if I'm it's my oak it's going to be mine yeah yeah but there's no need for that any, I've calmed down no and I my philosophy has always been well I'll just out hike those guys I I don't know who you, you know, are and you know what I just will out I just will hike further and longer yeah and, if, and <laughs> a majority of the time that's yeah. what what we've learned and, works yeah I mean, that was paramount really to our effective. final well a all the success you had in the um in the, the gulch in the gulch in the gulch you know i shot that bull not too far from screaming ridge screaming ridge is on that same hillside yeah, yeah. just blows my mind just yeah. blows my mind and you shot that bull close to where that big boy was that opening weekend that we yep. saw with jared yep. i mean that yeah yeah, I have video. I have video on my phone of five different bulls on that hillside yep. the morning before. Yeah. And the next morning, the only one's there is, is this one. Is the one I shot. Anyway, yeah, I you know, save the story. It's all good. It's all fodder. I I know that we want to be careful. If you do have valuable stuff, get an air tag. Right? Yeah. Those those little oh, yeah. air tags that you can track it. So I see I do see some a lot of success where people's like, "Hey, this this air tag that I have, it's in this guy's garage. He's got my kayak. Yeah. He's got my bow. I seen a guy who actually had his bow and arrow stolen. And he gets to the sheriff. The sheriff says, actually, the guy had tons of it stole tons of his stuff. Wow. And the sheriff comes and says, Hey, if you give this guy his stuff back, he says he won't press charges. And the guy goes and gets his stuff, says, I'm sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this stuff. I think he I've gives, seen videos like that. He gives all his stuff back. So it's weird. It's weird. But you can put air tags on some valuable stuff. It's gonna be uh, if you're going to put it at the trail, uh, the, the the trailhead, but yeah, and where deep in elk country, gosh, I don't know if anybody's crazy enough to, if you're up there, you're not up there scouting. You're not yeah. up there scouting for a victim, right? You're going to go to the, to the hikey trailheads where the people have, I, I'm not going <laughs> to put opportunity against any criminal because nope. they're going to do nope. what they do. So Cause they could be out hunting too. Yeah. Criminals hunt too. Yeah, they do. And if they're at your trailhead, they could be stealing from you. Yeah. Anyway, protect yourself. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want that one first or last. Which one's that? The arrowhead or yeah, uh, village. What's it say? That <laughs> shed hunter. I was trying to give it cryptic. In- Sorry. Anyway, yeah. Shed hunters find an ancient Native American village by accident. Yeah. Tell me about this one. Okay. 
Well, this is just a data point in a series of data points in understanding the North American hunter. Okay. The history of the North American hunter. Because we have we have evidence that goes back and we con- tr- you know uh, conventionally believed that 15 to 17,000 years ago humans showed up on in, uh, in the western hemisphere. Yeah. And now we're starting to see evidence that they were here long before yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of evidence. And so um you know when 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 the ice age did when the ice age receded when the glaciers receded the ice age came to an end as it is now. There was there more and more population moving moving north, and so some of the freshest stuff we have is out here. Yeah, is out here where the glaciers were just last left. Like we're close to Glacier National Park, right in Yellowstone. So there's and there's still there's still glaciers yeah, yeah. in Yellowstone and other places in, in Idaho. Yeah. yeah, and so and so those glaciers are still retreating, and we're finding things because of that, and and we're finding that because. Because the ice is melting, and it's 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 the newest stuff. Yeah, right. It's the newest stuff. If we think and we think, oh, that's what happened. They were just it would, they were just the last ones here. Well, that's just it. They were the last ones here. You, yeah. you get a little bit further, and you, we're going to find more evidence. And you get a little bit further, we mm-hmm. might find more evidence. So wherever this story is going, because yeah. they're going to continue to find, and they're going to continue to find um, more and more villages yeah. as people get out. Yeah, but. There are uh, a, a couple of places now, White Sands, New Mexico, and a place in Oregon, I believe. Maybe it was Idaho, but both dated to 40,000 years. Yes. Yeah. Villages. Yeah. Like, what, what, I'm is not there a surprised. date on this one? I, I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm kind of relieved that we're, we're getting, we're breaking, free. there's no date. Okay. We're, but I'm relieved that we're breaking free of these long held beliefs about things yeah. because it makes. It makes intuitive sense to me that, yeah, we've been around this long, or, or people have been around this long in this continent. But it, if it's around for a long, long time, there's got to have been other things that have happened here yeah. with yeah humans. So, and you know how long we've we been here four or five hundred years, right? Yeah, you know why people and they were here for tens of thousands. thousands. Yeah, that's crazy. That just blows my mind, and. So any evidence of, of of the past hunters of the North American continent, I I I I'm just I'm I'm a fan of, and so I see those stories. And I is there anything specific in the story that jumps out? That it's it's just a picture with the title. I There's... wanted I wanted a reminder, and I believe I read that article. But I wanted a reminder. Maybe that is the one that was uh, a, they found another forty thousand year old site. Um, but I just wanted another reminder that hey. This this story is not done. No. This story is not done. In fact, there was a scientist who found all the Clovis points, right? Who yeah. kind of named the Clovis people, and he came up with a theory called Clovis first. Yeah. No matter what you found, it wasn't before Clovis. No matter what your data says, it wasn't before Clovis. Clovis first. He wanted to cement wow. the idea, and he did. They did. He had other scientists. He had yeah, other, yeah. other good buddies on his side. They were pushing the Clovis first uh, narrative, and they pushed it for decades. Yeah, yeah. For decades. Oh, the Clovis were first. The Clovis were first. They were not. But that scientist was a not, and not the first d bag to, huh. to to have his own agenda yeah. like that. Yeah. So anyway, people be who people be. That's a that's a funny aside. Um. The Bannock Association post here. Yeah. Uh, as 1864, Mary Edgerton uh, wrote in a letter to her family oh, in Ohio. Oh, yes, yes. Please read it. This is great. So a letter to her family in Ohio. Uh, this is January 17th, 1864, Mary Edgerton. Quote, we had extremely cold weather here a week before last. The mercury in the thermometers after going 40 degrees below zero froze in the bulb. I never knew such cold weather or anything like it. I was so afraid that the children would freeze their noses and ears in the night that I got up a number of times in the night to see that their heads were covered. Their beds would be covered with frost. I saw their frozen breath. It is much warmer now. <laughs> End quote. Is that something? 
Is that something? You think your mom fussing over you eating your vegetables? You think your mom fussing over where you brushed your teeth or took a shower or got a clean shorts on? Man, your mom is fussing. Make sure you're alive. Yeah. Make sure your head is covered with a blanket yeah. and she can see layers of frost from your breath on top of it because the house is that cold. cold. Yeah, that's just remarkable. That's hard living out west, man. That is hard living. Yeah. So I just, I, I just much like that. appreciation to moms <laughs> worldwide and central heating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moose attacks and injures a Ketchum woman. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah, I, I, <laughs> That's your. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, what was the context? It's been a couple weeks. Uh, by the way, by the way, let me let me just real quick. Last week I missed. The Elk Season podcast, because I had a dinner. Yeah. The only cheat meal I've had since January 2nd on my Scorched Earth plan. We had, there is a there is a Peking restaurant uh, over there behind Wendy's. Yes. Um, they will take your, your game meat. Yeah. And cook it into their dishes. Okay. And this guy had, had some extra ducks. He had 12 extra ducks. Oh, wow. And so he invited a bunch of friends out. And so we had all, we had a okay. six course meal. With twelve of these guys, this guy's ducks. Wow! That he had. So, anyways, that's why I missed last week. It was just cool. And, was it and good? This, this was a guy who who spent thirty. It was awesome. This was the guy who spent thirty years bow hunting elk and never harvested with a bow. Wow! Boat. Wow! Yeah. This is a guy who was ready with a horse. He goes, "Why didn't you call me when you got an elk down?" Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. I'm still feeding for some more duck. Vesta is oh. not a big fan of duck, but I had some duck at the Desert yeah. Cafe at the College of Southern Idaho, and I. I'm. St- it was a. Uh, it had some sort of uh, cranberry. Yeah. Uh, uh, something. It was Glaze. just a. Yeah. It yeah. was. Oh. Duck is very beefy. It's very so beefy. Yeah. It, it, it tastes. It, it tastes. The texture are a lot like beef. Yeah. Uh, a little bit leaner. A little bit cleaner taste. I think. But anyways. Uh, in Oklahoma, it looks like somebody killed an elk there. Yeah. yeah with a bow, crossbow. Yeah. I don't. There's not much context here to the, this. All we need to know is. There's elk in Oklahoma. That's pretty cool. I was wondering if they were going to. Like, <laughs> that so. uh, that's all I know is, you know, the elk, there's, yes, there's Rocky Mountain elk all over the place, but actually they're in Oklahoma too. Elk in Iowa, not an unwelcome sight or not an uncommon sight. So there's elk yeah. in Iowa. So yeah, that's yeah. cool. It's, they're, yeah. They're returning the form. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been, a re- I guess in a way, an enlightening and relief to know that elk are just everywhere here, yeah. and I, I, my perception was that they, they were just hunted to this extinction in most states, and so to see them having right. sort of this uh, emergence of sorts, at least, uh, or at least bringing yeah. it to my awareness that they're not fully gone, is really yeah. cool. Uh, Wyoming Fish, uh, Wildlife, and Parks, <laughs> Game and Fish Department. Why are we always in, <laughs> just? It's, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Has confirmed the presence of chronic waste and disease oh, in elk. Oh, I remember this one because it, you know, with the last CWD cases that we dealt with in Idaho or in our region yeah. were on the other side of the Rockies. They were yeah. all the way up near Washington. Yeah. Um, and now we have them on the other side of the Rockies in Wyoming. And so it might be worth getting your animal tested in, yeah. in, in, in coming years, see if that uh, CWD is. <sighs> Is out there, so yeah. And then in, in here in Idaho, one thing that I guess to start wrapping it up, but we only got five. Four I know we haven't left, talked about the wolves yet, and that's where I was going. I was yeah. like, uh, here in Idaho, just as I was coming home from yeah. from work, you were headed over here too, and yeah. I wonder if we heard the same podcast, probably, probably. And so just the talking same about news report, news report, yeah. Not, I guess not yeah. a podcast, but uh, so we talked about this last year with uh, Idaho saying we're going to get rid of ninety percent of the wolves, and yeah, uh, I par- made a TikTok about it, yeah. joking about it, yeah. yeah. And so uh, the the news reporter came on, and, and it was actually somebody from the Idaho Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Yep. Idaho Fishing Game. Anyway, right. he actually sounded irritated at the whole over-excitement of the 90% Ugh. thing. And he, he said, was, this is not this, this. This was a media takeaway. They said it was 90%. It was not. Well, what 90% was was 150 wolves. Yeah. Right now, there's 1,500 wolves. Yeah. And they said, well... We were the the goal, the goal of the wolf reintroduction program was to have 150 wolves. Yeah, but they weren't delisted until they reached 500. Yeah. So 
So that was those were the two debating points was right. do we want to go to where it was delisted like there's a healthy enough population and have five, six hundred wolves in the state, right. or are we gonna knock it all the way down to 150? Obviously, in the news reports, that didn't go over well. Right. But I still think, I still really believe, and we're gonna need this. We're gonna need this in the years to come. Colorado is going to be overrun yeah. with wolves. We need a secondary market for wolf pelts. Yeah. We really do. And I think I thought of I thought of this idea. I thought everything through on the way over. <laughs> From A to Z. You know how I work. From A to Wolf. Uh a sheep in wolves' clothing. <laughs> That's the idea, is just make mittens that are wool on the inside. And wolf on the outside. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant! Isn't that fun? Yeah, isn't that fun? It's a sheep and wolf's clothing. The website, everything. See, it just makes sense. Yes, you just fill in the blanks. Billion dollar we're, idea. We're, <laughs> okay, now. sharks. Have you ever wondered why am I wearing regular mittens when I could have wolves on? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry. You probably, there's, <laughs> it's my brain. Like I, I can't think now because I'm stuck on Shark Tank. <laughs> It, it, you know, and here's what's more embarrassing about that. When you said, okay, sharks, shark take wasn't the first thing that popped in my head. <laughs> what was? Baby shark. Do, oh. do, 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 oh. do, 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 do. Oh. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know. That only lasted for a year and a half. Uh, life, so dur- Why did that come out during the pandemic? Why did it have to happen then? <laughs> so, <laughs> like, we're all stuck at home being tortured yeah. by shark. Baby yeah. shark. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it's now they're they're saying five hundred wolves. They want to get it down yeah. and manage around there, and that's you know roughly sixty percent of the population. But if you decrease. really, but but really, um, if and there's a lot of elk hunters that believe this. A lot of elk hunters believe the wolf population needs to come down. We have to have. Yeah. it would really really help a secondary I, market for wolf pelts. I just thought of an insensitive. Um, just buy a wolf pelt. Yeah, I just thought of an insensitive. Um, I like it already. Specialty that you could make <laughs> with your wolf your yeah. wolf gloves. So. The, 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 it'll happen every now and then, but you can have a particular line where the wolf gloves are lined with the sheep that it killed. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. So uh, how can I be assured that this wolf killed this sheep? <laughs> well, and that's a DNA. It's a, there's a picture of the rancher that shot the wolf. <laughs> yeah. Well, you remember uh, that comes Red, with every pair, you know, red green had those skunk mittens. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You watch. Red Green had two giant mittens. Anyway, so here they are. He's got these mittens. mittens. I think he had a a skunk cap, too. I wouldn't mind. You know the kind of hat you like to wear with the flaps that come down? Yeah. You unsnap Well, oh, those are so comfy. Dude. If I could find one to fit my giant head. Dude. I, the one that I have would fit your head. It fits my head. All right. And I bought it at Walmart. But and I, I bought my kids ones for Christmas from Walmart. But if I could get one for $250 that's made from a wolf, that would be so much more comfortable. That is true. <laughs> that is true. It would just be nice. It would just be nice. So there needs I mean, right, there would still be there would still be plenty of beaver in Idaho if there wasn't such an obsession for beaver hats in yeah. Europe. Right? There just would be. Yeah. So if we if we if if we as sportsmen help create a market for wolf. My pelts, beaver came from the West. Yeah. Yes, it did. <laughs> Wild West, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's and on El- that. That's the Elk Season Podcast. Have a great week. Cheers. Goodbye. Be welcome.